हाई गाइज वेलकम बैक टू दीक्षा कर्नाटका यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज योर निर्मल सर एंड अगेन टूडे आई एम गोना स्टार्ट विथ योर मॉक टेस्ट वन सोल्यूशन ऑफ केमिस्ट्री क्वेश्चन नंबर वन टू सिक्सटी गाइज एंड I want to tell you again that if you've still not registered with your Abhyas KCT 2024, you which you can conquer C KCT in with eight free mock test papers. Okay, so if you want to have this mock test paper, kindly go down. There is a link given in the de description box. Click on the link, register with your email. You will be getting the PDF even in the email and join our WhatsApp channel. WhatsApp channel for all the regular updates. Okay. For all the regular updates, and the WhatsApp channel link is also given in the description box. So let's get started with today's class. That is question number one. That is, if if one atom of an element A weighs six point six four four into ten to the power of minus twenty three grams, then the molar mass in gram per mole of the element is. We know that if we want to weigh the element A, then what will be the formula? The formula is nothing but here atom weight of weight of element A is equals to weight of an element weight of element into weight of an element into Avogadro's constant Avogadro's constant. Now, now what you will do? What is the weight of the element? They have given six point four four into ten to the power of minus twenty three into six point zero two three into ten to the power of minus twenty three. So what will be the answer? When you do this, you will get your answer has forty grams. That is nothing but your option B will be your correct answer. Option B will be your correct answer. Clear, guys? Now coming back to question number two. Oh, so guys. Before going to question number two, I want to make an important update here. That is, we have started with a crash course. That is, Lakshya KCT crash course, which is completely offline. For all, for more details, the video link is given in the description for box, and the registration link is given in the description box. And crack KCT 2024 in 28 days. In just 28 days, right after your board exams. So. It is completely offline, so it is like a residential as well as a day scholar program. Okay, guys. Now coming back to question number two, the uncertainty in the momentum of an electron is one into ten to the power of minus five kilo kilograms meter per second. The uncertainty in its position will be dash. So we know that what is Heisenberg uncertainty formula. So after adding this formula, that is that is nothing but your Delta S, that is, we have to find out the position. That is H four pi four pi into. There is another element. What we will be adding? That is delta P. So what is H? You know that Heisenberg constant. That is nothing but six point six two six point six two six into ten to the power of minus thirty four divided by thirty four divided by four into three point one four. And this is nothing but your what you will add. That is one into ten to the power of minus five. So when you solve this, when you solve this, you will get the correct answer is nothing but your five point two seven into ten to the power of minus thirty meter. That is option C will be your correct answer. Question number three: The order of the first ionization energies of the elements like lithium, beryllium, boron, sodium is dash. So we know that. Ionization energy increases from increases from left to right. It increases, and from top to bottom, it left to right. It increases. Top to bottom, it decreases. Everyone know, but specially where in case of beryllium and boron, beryllium has electronic configuration of one s two. 2s2 completely, whereas boron has 1s2, 2s2, and 2p1. Therefore, beryllium has completely s orbital is filled. Therefore, the correct correct way of is nothing but your beryllium, boron, lithium, and sodium. That is nothing but your option B will be your right answer. Clear, guys? Coming back to question number four, arrange the following in the increasing order of their bond order. Now everyone know 
this is your dioxygen, O2 will be your dioxygen. Next, O2 plus, O2 plus is oxycation, oxycation, then O2 minus is superoxide, superoxide and O2 2 minus is peroxide. Now, we have to uh, add this, the, keep this in the increasing order of their bond order. Now, we know that bond order will be more in your cation. So, cation will be in the last. So, where is the cation is last? That is nothing but your option A is your correct answer because all are peroxide, oxygen and it is anions. Therefore, directly without knowing also you can give that is option A will be your right answer. But when I go with this O2 2 minus the bond order of this will be 1, 1 1.0 then it is O2 that is superoxide O2 minus and this bond order will be 1.5 next oxygen 2 next O2 plus it is nothing but your 2.5 therefore this is your increasing order option A will be your correct answer clear guys understood now coming back to the next question that is nothing but your question number 5 that is water is dipolar whereas beryllium fluoride is not because because the structure of this is water is like this and beryllium fluoride is sorry fluoride is like this therefore this is your angular this is your angular where this is your linear therefore because H2O is angular and beryllium fluoride is linear very simple and option A will be your correct answer. Now coming back to question number 6 equal masses of methane and hydrogen are mixed equal masses of methane that is nothing but your CH4 CH4 what will be this that is nothing but your uh, 4 12 plus 4 16 proper then hydrogen that is nothing but your 2 okay the atomic mass the molecular mass also we can say are fixed in the empty container at 25 degree celsius okay now the fraction of the total pressure is exerted by hydrogen is dash we have to find out now we know that methane is the molecular mass is 16 and hydrogen is 2 now what we have to find out the mole fraction of h2 now mole fraction of h2 will be nh2 divided by nh2 plus nh2 divided by nh2 plus ch4 okay now we have to when we add this the mole fractions what we will get that is nothing but your w2 divided w by 2 divided by w by 2 plus what is this w by 16 now when i cross multiply and when i take into the numerator what does it happens that is nothing but your w by 2 listen to it w by 2 into 16 divided by w 9w therefore you cancel it you cancel it and you will get that is 8 by 9 that is w w cancel 2 ones are 2 eights are 8 by 9 will be your correct answer but we know that mole fraction is directly proportional to the partial pressure okay mole fraction is directly proportional to the partial pressure therefore your correct option will be option b that is 8 by 9 now coming back to question number 7 standard enthalpy and standard entropy changes that is delta h delta s for the change of the oxidation of ammonia is at 298 kelvin so temperature del okay t will take it approximately as 300 kelvin or so and so then the standard gibbs free energy change this is very simple question direct formula we'll add that is that that is delta g that is nothing but here delta g g is equals to delta h minus t delta s now when i substitute this what do i get that is nothing but here minus 382 minus of 300 into minus 145 okay when i do this what what answer you will get 
you will get the answer as nothing but your 33 that is nothing but your 338.5 kilojoules per mole okay so delta g will be there this is your correct answer that is option c will be your correct answer okay now now, heat of neutralization of a strong acid by strong base is a constant value because. Now, coming back to this, this is a direct question, very simple question. Uh, even a 7th standard student can give the correct answer for this. That is nothing but your only H plus and OH minus ions react every case. That is nothing but your when I react with NaCl plus H2O, what do I get? NaOH plus? HCl. Now, how will I react this? That is nothing but Na plus Cl minus plus H plus OH minus gives rise to Na plus OH minus and plus H plus Cl minus. Here, what are reacting? Only H plus and OH minus are reacting in every case. Therefore, option B will be your correct answer. Now coming back to question number 4, this is ammonium carbamate. When ammonium carbamate is under, it is in an equilibrium reaction, they are given two molecules of ammonia and carbon dioxide, it is given. Now if the equilibrium pressure at 3 atm for the above reaction, then the equilibrium constant for Kp for the reaction is dash, they are asking. Now it is given that, now, when I go with this, it is given actually like this, that is nothing but your NH4, I will solve it here, NH4COO NH2, plus carbon dioxide gas. Now, now, let us see what they have given, that is 2P and P. So, they have given at, at as 3 ATM. 3 so, what is it? Total pressure 2 plus P is equals to 3. Therefore, P is nothing but your 1 ATM. Clear? We can understand 2 into 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 3. So, directly we can understand that is P is 1 atmospheric pressure. Therefore, we know that Kp is equals to pressure of ammonium twice. Okay? Because of 2 is there. So, it is square. That is P square into into that is p into carbon dioxide that is to the whole square okay no okay so to the whole square into 1 is nothing but your 4 therefore option a will be your correct answer why only arsenic get precipitated in arsenic sulfide and zinc 2 plus as in zinc okay when arsenic get precipitated from the as a zinc or uh, sulfide where not in case of zinc as zinc sulfide when H2S is passed uh, through the acidic solution containing arsenic and zinc. When I, when I put the arsenic into the h 2 when a arsenic sulfide when it is there, arsenic is precipitated but not in case of zinc. Why? Because we know that solubility, solubility product of arsenic sulfide is less than that of zinc sulfide. Clear? Now coming back to which of the following species do not show disproportionation reaction guys? Where does, okay, I'll tell you. When there, when there will be a disproportionation reaction, when oxidation state of that element is in the low. When the oxidation state of that element is higher, it will not show the disproportionation reaction. Now, if I keep on writing the oxidation state, that is, this will be your plus 1. So, here it will be plus uh, Cl and 2 minus there. Therefore, here it will be plus 3 and here it will be plus 5 and here it will be plus 7. So, among this, which will under not undergo the disproportionation reaction? Therefore, option D will be your correct answer. The increasing order of ionic character of cesium fluoride, lithium iodide, sodium bromide and potassium chloride is dash. So, very simple ionic order is nothing but here directly proportional to the high electronegativity which has the high electronegativity which, I will, which the, it will be having the ionic character will be more. Therefore, coming back to this that is nothing but here lithium iodide, sodium bromide, potassium chloride and cesium fluoride is your correct 
answer. Clear? So, this will be your correct answer. Now, coming back to question number 13, that is nothing but your variable valency is exhibited by dash. Variable ex valency is exhibited by dash. Very simple, right? What is variable valency? You know that. And which chapter that the variable oxidation state or valency will come in your picture? D and F block element. D and F block element is what? Those are transition elements. Among this, which is transition element? No, no, and even this neon. Therefore, only iron is having the transition element. Therefore, option C is your correct answer. What X in the following reaction become when an alkene is converted into alkene? Now you have to make an alkene. Okay, coming back to alkene, so this option B will be removed out. So these three options are there. When you know this, how does it forms? That is CH3C triple bond CH goes rise to 2HBr. When it reacts with 2HBr, what does it happen? What does it happen? 2H plus plus 2 Br minus will be there. When they approach here, bond breaks. So, bond breaks and what does it forms? Here there will be one bond, here it will be two hydrogens goes and attached to this, it will become CH3. Therefore, here bromine will come and attach. Therefore, option D will be your correct answer that is 2 comma 2 dibromopropane is formed, alkane is formed. Okay, very simple question they have asked here. Which of the following is least stable? Among this, we can see all are carbocations. Among the carbocation, primary carbocation is least stable. Clear? Least stable. This is your primary, secondary, then this is also secondary or tertiary, then tertiary. Therefore, option A will be your correct answer. That is, Primary carbocation are least stable. Next, the IUPAC name of the compound. What is the IUPAC name of this compound? When I see the IUPAC name of this compound, let me write down the structure. That is CH3COH, CH, 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 CH2, COOH. Now, let me consider this. That is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Clear? Now, let me consider and so what is the substitute we can see here that is at the fourth position it should be hydroxy. So, 4 hydroxy, 4 hydroxy. So, option 2 and option A get cancelled. 4 hydroxy, next it is pent, pent, okay, it is pent and here it is 4 methyl, then it goes, okay, therefore, here only you got direct that is option B is your correct answer. Let us see. So, therefore, that is nothing but your 4 hydroxy pentanoic acid okay 4 hydroxy 3 pentoic acids therefore option c will be your correct answer pentane that is at third position there is a sorry i didn't write it here is a double bond clear next the order of reactivity of halogen in the substitution reaction in aliphatic hydrocarbons is very simple that is fluorine chlorine and bromine that is very conceptual okay that is question number 17 Question number 18, the time required for the 100% completion of a zero order reaction. For a zero order reaction, we know the formula that is initial concentration minus final concentration divided by time. Therefore, therefore, we know that final concentration will be a zero. So, we will remove that. K is equals to initial concentration divided by T. Therefore, T is equals to initial concentration divided by T. So, we take it as initial concentration is equal to small letter a therefore t is equals to a by k a by k therefore direct correct correct answer will be option c that is a by k next question number 19 time required for the oxidation of one mole of iron 2 oxide to iron 3 oxide now see here this is your iron 2 oxide when it given to the iron 3 oxide what will be the one mole they are telling? So, see here, iron 2 oxide will be in the plus 2 oxidation state. When it is given, it becomes half of iron 3 oxide, that is plus 3 plus 1 electron is given. Therefore, one mole of this is giving what? One electron is giving, one electron is equals to 1 Faraday. So, what is the charge required? That is 
one Faraday charge is required. Therefore, option A is your correct answer. The relative lowering vapor pressure is directly proportional to the solute. Therefore, nothing but your nothing but your Rolle's law that is P naught by P divided by that is P naught by P divided by P that is nothing but your Rolle's law. There is option C is your correct answer. Direct answer is there for this. Now, coming back to question number 21, this is a direct definition what they have given. A mixture of two completely miscible non-ideal liquids which distill as, as such without change in its composition at a constant temperature like a pure liquid, then this mixture is known as dash. What is this mixture is known as? That is nothing but your azeotropic mixture. This is a direct definition they have asked. The osmotic pressure of 6.84 mass by volume solution of cane sugar at 300 Kelvin, then the molecular weight of the sugar is 342. Therefore, direct, if, if I take well, if I take an example, 5 percent of mass by volume is what? That is nothing but here. 5 gram of sugar is dissolved in 100 ml of water. Clear? 100 ml of water. Now, if I take a formula, that is nothing but your PV is equals to NRT, that is that is nothing but your pi is equals to that is N divided by PRT. Therefore, now substitute this and give the correct answer that is 6.84 into Redbox constant is 1000. Redbox constant, sorry, R will write universal gas constant and the volume also will write that is molecular weight and here it will be nothing but your 100 therefore your correct answer after the solving it will becomes 4.926 atm clear now coming back to question number 23 the boiling point of benzene the boiling point of benzene is 353 kel uh, 0.3 kelvin when 1.80 gram of non volume solute was dissolved in 90 grams of benzene then the boiling point is raised to 354.1 Kelvin given that boiling point constant for the benzene is 2.52 kilo Kelvin kg per mole then here we have to find out the elevation of boiling point but coming back to here elevation of the boiling point we can find out but they are asking the molar mass of the solute what is the unknown non-volume molar mass right that we have to find out so we will be using the formula that is nothing but your m2 is equals to m2 that is i am just changing the elevation of boiling formula directly i've changed and i'll be writing it that is 1000 into w2 clear 1000 into w2 into kb divided by divided by delta tb into w1 clear now substitute 1000 into w2 what will be the w2 1.8 so, 1.8 into 2.52, okay. Now, coming back to elevation of this delta Tb, we have to find out from the outside, that is what? That is nothing but your elevation of temperature from 354.1 to 353.3 is nothing but your, you get it as, so you will get it as 63 as a uh, difference, that is 0 0.8. So, here you will be getting a 0 0.8 as a difference. Therefore, when you convert it becomes a 63 gram. Therefore, now it is not 63, 0 0.8 we will write it as right now into W1. So, what is W1? That is nothing but your uh, 90 gram. Now, when I solve this, I will get it as 63 gram per mole. That is nothing but your option D will be your correct answer. Now, question number 24, that is this is your equation equation and e naught of the cell is they have given that 0 0.46 volt and equilibrium constant is very important term where every time they do ask this question okay now when we write the e naught of cell formula e naught of the cell formula let us write 0 0.059 volts divided by divided by 2 into log kc now log kc is equals to log kc is equals to now when i substitute this 
substitute cross multiply and if I substitute, what do I get? 0 0.46 volt into 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 divide into 2 divided by 0 0.059. Now, when I do this, when I do this, I will get it as 15.6 into log Kc. Now, equilibrium constant Kc is equals to anti log of 15.6 is nothing but your Kc is equals to 3.98 into 10 to the power of 15 will be your answer. Therefore, option C will be your correct answer. Okay. Now, delta naught of uh, nebitic molar conductivity of NaCl, HCl and sodium acetate are respectively this values. Then we have to find out the limiting molar conductivity of acetic acid and we know that this for this concept is from the famous law called as Cole rush law. Now, when I do this, so they are asking acetic acid that is HAC we write it as that is nothing but your limiting molar conductivity we write it out limiting molar conductivity of HCl plus limiting molar conductivity of sodium acetate minus limiting molar conductivity of limiting molar conductivity of what HCl, NAC and NaCl minus NaCl therefore therefore when you substitute this that is 425.9 plus 91.0 minus minus 126.4 when you solve this your correct answer will be that is nothing but your 390.5 simon centimeter simon per square per mole centimeter square per mole therefore that is your correct answer for the limiting molar conductivity for the acetic acid will be this option c will be your correct answer which of the following will not displace hydrogen and this is the question from the electrochemical series and the direct question we know that mercury is among all this this all the three elements stay above the hydrogen so they can displace the hydrogen in the acidic medium but we know that mercury is below the electro below the hydrogen in the electrochemical series therefore it will not displace any of the electrons or hydrogen in us in the acidic medium therefore correct answer is option d what is the order of a reaction which has the rate of expression like this that is order of the reaction is nothing but your addition of the addition of this powers that is 3 by 2 plus of minus 1 3 by 2 minus 1 is nothing but your 1 by 2 therefore correct answer will be option d will be your correct answer now coming back to question number 28 the following data were obtained during the first order thermal decomposition of a gram at constant volume they are asking so what will be you you will be using they are already given as 100 therefore directly substitute in the formula that is k is equals to k is equals to 2.303 divided by 100 into log of into log of initial pi minus pt clear now 2.303 divided by 100 into log of p initial what they have given that is 0 0.5 0 0.5 into 2 times of 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 512 you will get the answer as 2.303 divided by 100 into log into log log of what that is 1.04 and we convert it and you will get the answer as you will get the answer as 2.3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 per second this is your unit of a zero uh, uh, order of the reaction therefore correct answer will be option A. The time required for the decomposition of thionyl chloride to half of its initial amount in 60 minutes if the if the decomposition of the first order reaction then the rate constant of the reaction is that is directly we can use that is T half reaction T half is equals to 0 0.693 divided by K. Now we have to find out the rate constant 0 0.693 divided by 60 sorry that is T half 
that is nothing but your 60 0 0.693 divided by 60 what will be your answer that is nothing but your 1.55 into 10 to the power of minus 4 per second therefore the for this question the nearest option when you check it is nothing but your 1.92 therefore option a will be your correct answer okay now coming back to question number 30 which of the following pairs ions has the same electronic configuration when you check this the same electronic configuration will be for fe3 plus that is 26 and mn2 plus it is again a 26 that is ar argon argon with 3d5 the same and even ar with the argon that is 3d5 therefore option b will be your correct answer now coming back to question number 31 the elements in which electrons are progressively filled in 4f orbitals are called as now everyone we guys know that wherever the 4f subshell is filled in the in the transition elements we can understand that 4f where does it comes it comes to the lanthanide so the correct answer will be option b now coming back to question number 32 the coordination number and oxidation number of x in this complex is dash so coordination number is number of ligands so 5 plus 1 is nothing but your 6 so these two options are correct these two options are wrong now coming back to oxidation number x okay so we have to find out the oxidation number the oxidation number is nothing but your x minus 2 and minus 1 is equals to 0 x is equals to plus 3 therefore correct answer will be option c will be your correct answer clear now coming back to ammonia will not form complex ions with now we know that complex ions are formed only with the what what does it forms complex ion complex ion always forms with the transition elements among this which is not transition elements that is silver cadmium coppers are all transition elements whereas whereas lead is not a transition elements therefore it will not form not form complex with this it will not form complex so your correct answer will be option d that is pb2 plus clear guys now coming back to Question number 34, if liquids A and B form an ideal solution is, therefore their enthalpy will be equal to 0, that is after mixing, that is delta H mix will be 0, therefore option A will be your correct answer, that is the enthalpy of mixing will be 0. Now coming back to next, which of the following concentration factor is affected by the change in temperature? In this, um, when I see this, only molarity has a concentration term with the terms of volume as the volume changes with the rise in change in temperature. Therefore, your correct answer will be option A, molarity. Now, coming back to question number 36, oxidation number of, number of sulfur in this. So, please keep in your mind, oxidation number and coordination number, definite question, they are going to ask and even e equilibrium constant question also it is a definite now let us solve this na2 s4 o6 and it is a neutral complex will equate to 0 now write 2 into plus 1 plus 4 into x because we will consider x as this and 6 into minus 2 is equals to 0 2 ones are 2 plus 4x minus 12 is equals to 0 4x minus 10 is equals to 0, 4x is equals to 10, therefore x is equals to 10 divided by 4, 2 twos are 2 fives are, therefore x is equals to 5 by 2, therefore your correct answer will be, option D will be your correct answer, option D will be your correct answer. Now coming back to question number 35, this is your simple question, when an ethyl bromide, that is ethyl bromide, reacts with silver cyanide silver cyanide what does it form c2h5cn that is ethyl cyanide ethyl cyanide on reduction in the presence of zinc amalgam and hcl what is this zinc amalgam is nothing where do you use that is nothing but your in your 
Clemenson reduction. Therefore, it undergo Clemenson reduction to form what? It forms an amine that is nothing but your N propyl amine it forms. What does it forms? N propyl amine. Therefore, your correct answer will be option A will be your correct answer. Now, coming back to next question, dash catalyst is used. Conversion of an alcohol, alcohol into aldehyde plus hydrogen gas is evolved. Then what do we use? There is no reduction, so I will cancel this. There is no acidification, so I will cancel this. There is nothing but if we use copper, that is red hot copper is been used. This is your direct question we, we ask, okay. So, your correct answer will be copper. Next question, question number 39, which of the following will be colorless in aqueous solution? Whenever there is a paid, unpaid electrons are there, it will exhibit the color. When there is no unpaid electron, then there will be a colorless. Now, coming back to ionic form, we will see how many unpaid electrons of titanium 3 plus are there. There is actually how many? There is one unpaid electrons are there. For a vanadium, there are two unpaid electrons are there. For copper, for copper, C Cu plus is has zero unpaid electrons, whereas Mn plus 2 has five unpaid electrons and cobalt 3 plus has three unpaid electrons. Therefore, scadmium has zero unpaid electrons. So, among this, which option is resembling for the colorless? That is option 3 and option 4. Therefore, this can't be option 3, option 5. Wrong. This can't be. Therefore, option 3 and option 6 will be your correct answer. Therefore, your correct answer will be option 6. Sorry, guys. This is 6. Okay. Now, magnetic momentum of chromium is nearest to. So, what is the magnetic momentum formula? That is square root of n of n plus 2 into Bohr's magneton. That is the unit. Now, for chromium, for chromium, how many unpaired electrons are there? Four unpaired electrons are there. See here. See here, everyone. For Cr2 plus, four unpaired electrons are there. Therefore, square root will be 4 into 4 plus 2. That is nothing. 4 plus 2 is 4, 5, 6, 6 4 is a. What is 6, 4 is a? 24. Square root of 24 will be, what will be the answer? That is nothing for here. 4.89 Bohr's magneton will be there. This is your chromium's magnetic momentum. Now, let us find out. This is your questions. Now, we have to find out this value is nearest to which. Now, let us find out Mn plus 2. Mn plus 2, cobalt, then nickel. Then we will find out with the iron. Why I will tell later. For Mn plus 2, how many unpaid electrons are there? That is 5, this will be 3, this will be 2 and this will be 4. Unpaid electrons are there. Unpaid electrons, unpaid electrons, unpaid electrons and unpaid. So, there is already they are asking 4 unpaid electrons should be there. Right, 4 unpaid electrons is 4.89 brother. So, 4 in the 5 and 3, it will be more. So, this can't be nearest. Even this can't be, even this can't be. Therefore, the nearest will be iron. So, when you solve this, that is same, that is 4 into 4 plus 2, that is square root of 24, that is 4.89 Bohr's magneton. When you do this, 2 into 2 plus 2, that is nothing but a 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 2 is a 8, square root of 8. What is the square root of 8, guys? That is 2.82 Bohr's magneton. Therefore, same 3 into 3 plus 2, that is 5, 3 is a 15. So, square root of 15 will be is nothing but your 3.87 Bohr's magneton. When I do this, that is square root of 5 into 5 plus 2, 10, 10, uh, 5, 6, 7, 7, 5 is a 35. Square root of 35 will be dash. Square root of 35 will be 5.91. 5.91. So, that our nearest will be nothing but your Fe2 plus. Therefore, option A will be your correct answer. Option A will be your correct answer. Now, the lanthanide contraction is responsible for the fact that when I check with the option, we know that zirconium and ophnium, they resemble same, therefore they have the same radius, therefore that is option B will be your 
correct answer. Clear? Option B will be your correct answer. The oxidation state of cobalt in this, the oxidation state of cobalt in this, but and it is a plus 2, the x is equal. So, what you will do? So, x plus of minus 1 is equals to plus 2, x is equals to plus 2, plus 2 and plus 1 will be x is equals to plus 3. Therefore, your cobalt's, cobalt's oxidation state is plus 3 in this complex. Okay, this is a shortcut, so you can use this. Now, coming back to Question number 43, amongst the following, the most stable complex ion is dash. So, among this, we know that ethane dioate ion, ethane dioate ligands is a bidentate ligand and we know that bidentate ligands are the most stable complex. Therefore, option C is your correct answer. Now, the IUPAC name of this, coming back to the IUPAC name of this complex will be dash. So, listen to me. Now, this is your what kind of complex? K plus and this is this is your ion ionic complex. So, first we will be using potassium. So, everywhere the potassium is there and next we will see the ligand that is tetracyanido, tetracyanido. Everywhere it is same till here. Okay. Next, this will be not nickel, it will be nickel 8. So, here this two option goes off. Then coming back to oxidation state, it is 2, therefore it will be minus 2 therefore the year it will be your correct answer will be option A will be your correct answer not 3. So, it is potassium tetracyanido nicolate 2 will be your correct IUPAC name. Identify the Z in the following sequence. In this following sequence you have to identify the Z. So, the, what is this? This is your benzyl alcohol. See here when benzyl alcohol already there so I will not writing when benzyl alcohol reacts with thionyl chloride, thionyl chloride, what does it forms? What does it forms? It forms benzyl chloride. So, what does it forms? It forms benzyl chloride, benzene, CH2, Cl. When it forms benzyl chloride, when benzyl chloride reacts with potassium cyanide in the presence of ethanol, potassium cyanide in the presence of an ethanol, what does it forms? Benzyl cyanide. Again, it forms CH2Cl. So, it will form benzyl cyanide. This benzyl cyanide, this benzyl cyanide on reacting with hydronium ion, hydronium ion, what does it form? That is nothing but here, it forms an benzyl carboxylic acid. That is CH2COOH. It forms benzyl carboxylic acid X, Y and this is your Z. Therefore, Z is benzyl or carboxylic acid, this can't be, this can't be, this is 2 ethyl carboxylic acid. So, therefore, your correct answer will be option B will be your correct answer. Now, which of the following represents the correct order of increasing of boiling point? We know that branched chain has less boiling point, branched chains have less boiling point than the straight chain. Okay, straight chain has a less, straight chain has a more boiling points than the branched. Among this, here you can see only three, three compounds they have given that is 2 chloropropane, next 1 chloropropane, next it is given as 1 chlorobutene, 1 chloro butane. Now, when I check this, all the, this three has the same molecular formula. When this, all this three has the same molecular formula, which is more branched here, that is 2 chloro propane. Next, it is less, very less. Next, it is 1 chloro propane. Next, it is 1 chloro butane. So, therefore, therefore, when I see branched, and straight and chain. Therefore, your correct answer will be option B, 2 chloropropane, 1 chloropropane and 1 chlorobutane. Therefore, option B will be your correct answer. Now, coming back to the following reaction is called, when you see this aryl halide, when I, when I take the two molecules of aryl halide, listen here, aryl halide reacts with sodium metal in the presence of an ether, it forms diphenyl. Therefore, this reaction famously called as phytic 
reaction that is FR reaction. So this is your Fittek reaction. Clear? Now coming back to arrange the following compounds in the increasing order of their solubility in water. We know that the solubility of more will be because of hydrogen bond character is more in the carboxylic acid. Therefore, there it is easily soluble. Carboxylic acid is easily soluble after carboxylic acid. Listen to me. After carboxylic acid, then it can be an alcohol. After alcohol, it can be aldehyde. After aldehyde, it can be an ether. After ether, it can be an hydrocarbon. Okay, those are like this, they will solve. The most difficult is to solve the hydrocarbon. Then we should ether, aldehyde, alcohol and carboxylic acid easily we can dissolve. Now they are telling increasing order of their solubility. Now it should be increasing order of their solubility, which is less that is hydrocarbons. Among this, the hydrocarbon is what? That is nothing but your N-butane. So that will be 2. After 2, after 2, listen to me, after 2, which is the ether? Ethoxy ethane. So that is 4. Next it is aldehyde, pentanal, that is 3. Clear? Next it is alcohol. Then it is only pentanol, that is 1. So 2, 4, 3, 1. 2, 4, 3, 1. Therefore, option C will be your correct answer. Keep in it mind. In the further question also, I am going to ask this the C. Question number 49. Which of the following reaction will not yield phenol? Coming back to when, bro when in bromobenzene reacts with magnesium, dry ether and it follows, it does not yield the phenol. Now, coming back to this, it forms a benzene diazonium chloride. It will form, form with again benzene diazonium chloride reacts with water to form a phenol. When this oleum reacts, it forms a benzene sulfonic acid. Benzene sulfonic acid on further hydrolysis will yield phenol. Here, coming back to, coming back to when chlorobenzene reacts with NaOH, NaOH, it will form phenol. Listen here, it will form phenol. When phenol is reacted with HCl again, what does it form? Again, it will form the chlorobenzene. Therefore, therefore, Option D will not yield the phenol, but rest everywhere the enol is been, phenol is been given. Therefore, which will not yield phenol is option D. Clear? Now coming back to on boiling point with concentrated HBr, the ethyl phenyl ether will give dash. Now, see here, ethyl C2H5, next it is phenyl and ether. So, this is here. Ethyl, phenyl, ether. When ethyl phenyl ether is reacted with hydrogen bromide in the highest boiling point, what does it gives? It gives nothing but your CR. This OH will give and BR will react with this. So what does it forms? It forms some phenol plus C2H5Br. Therefore, what is it? Phenol and ethyl bromide. Therefore, option A will be your correct answer. Which of the which is the most suitable reagent for the conversion of conversion of this? So this is your allyl alcohol. This is your allyl alcohol. When it reacts with it is forming an aldehyde. Keep in your mind. So which is the best reagent here? Potassium dichromate in acidic medium? No. This is your dibuto sulfur uh, dibuto so buto aluminium hydrate. Therefore, it can be also no. It is a reduction. Therefore, zinc dust, it is also reduction. Therefore, for the oxidation, we know that PCC, that is pyridium chlorochromate will form this. Therefore, your correct answer will be, option C will be your correct answer, that is PCC. Arrange the following compounds in the increasing order of ease of hydrogen bond formation. Where does the hydrogen bond formation will be more? More. Where can you see the hydrogen bond bond? Formation will be more here by increasing. More will be in the carboxylic acid. After carboxylic acid, then it is alcohol. Alcohol, then it is aldehyde. Aldehyde, then it is ether. Then after ether, it is a hydrocarbon. Now, let us find the hydrocarbons in this. So, there is no hydrocarbon. We will keep it out. Where is the ether? Ether is nothing but your 3. So, it will be increasing order will be. First will be your 
it will go with the increasing order so it will be 3 clear after 3 then it is aldehyde where is the aldehyde among this this is option 1 so it is that is option 1 will be your aldehyde then after aldehyde is this alcohol that is 2 therefore then it is carboxylic acid therefore it is 4 therefore 3 1 2 4 3 1 2 4 therefore option b will be your correct answer what is z in the following sequence of the reaction what is the z in the following sequence of the reaction that is meta bromo nitro benzene when reacts with magnesium and ether magnesium and ether it forms a grignard's reagent grignard's reagent when reacts with an carboxylic acid it forms an adduct that is intermediate that is c double bond o o m g b r it forms with the nitro which is unstable it reacts with water it reacts with water to form dash that is nothing but it will remove this therefore that is nothing but your nitro benzene carboxylic acid that is no2 and it will be cooh here therefore nitro benzene carboxylic acid therefore option b will be your correct answer in clemenson reduction carbonyl compound is treated mint very simple we know that we have already studied this that is zinc amalgam and hcl very good the decreasing what is the decreasing order of basicity of primary secondary and tertiary ethyl amines and ammonia guys already in the ncrt test for the ethyl ammonia they have given the directly they have given that they says that is it is secondary amines therefore then it is coming back to tertiary then it is primary then it is am amine therefore try which which option would be correct for this for this which option would be correct now when i see in this coming back to option d see here secondary tertiary primary then amine therefore option d will be your correct answer what is the z of the following sequence of the reaction when an see here when aniline reacts with acetic anhydride when aniline reacts with acetic anhydride it forms nh it forms what does it forms it forms acetinalide that is nothing but your nhc double bond o ch3 this is your this is your acetinalide this acetinalide when it reacts this will be your x okay when it reacts with bromine in the presence of carbon tetrachloride what does it forms it forms an para bromo acetinalide here bromine will come here same acetinalide group will be there para bromo acetinalide this para bromo acetinalide when reacts with water when reacts with water what does it forms that is nothing but it, it forms para bromo here bromo will be there para bromo aniline therefore correct answer will be option a will be your correct answer c3 h9 and n represent dash they have given amine let us start writing the amine that is ch3 ch2 ch2 and nh2 okay that is nh2 so this will be a primary so see here 1 2 3 c3 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 h9 and there is one n so it is a primary amine then secondary amine ch3 ch nh2 therefore ch3 so it is here 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 1 is 9 again and c3 are there one h is there this is your secondary amine therefore ch3 n n ch3 therefore ch3 ch3 therefore find out this c9 3 and h it is there therefore it is tertiary therefore it can be represent primary secondary and tertiary amine also therefore it is an all of this next this is a direct definition the rapid interconversion of a d glucose into beta d glucose in the solution is known as muta rotation so spontaneous interconversion of B, uh, dextrose glucose into beta d glucose this is known as muta rotation clear guys next the ph value of the solution at which this is a direct definition again 
the pH value of solution at which a particular amino acid does not migrate under the influence of electric field. Electric field bandhi takshna you will understand and it is called an isoelectric point. Very good. That is option D will be your correct answer. Next, we have come to the last question that is nothing but your which of the following statement is not correct regarding the DNA. Okay, it controls the synthesis of protein. Yes, this is correct. We have to find out not correct. It has the unique property of replication as DNA replication is there. It is chiefly occurs in the nucleus of the cell. Yes, it occurs in the nucleus of the cell. It is single stranded. No, it is double stranded. It is double stranded. Therefore, this is your wrong statement. Then your correct answer will be option A will be your correct answer guys. So guys, now we have finished with our we have finished our mock test 1 detailed explanation and solution from the question number 1 to question number 60. Okay guys. So now coming back to again I want to tell you again I am telling you we have started with Lakshya KCT crash course which is completely offline and you can register for this crash course which is completely offline which will happen in the Diksha campuses all around the Bangalore and you can register for this program which is given in the link our team will contact you and the video link is also given for to know more about the Lakshya KCT crash course you the video link is given in the description box kindly click on that and see it now what I want to tell you can crack KCT 2024 in just 28 days so this Lakshya KCT is completely completely offline clear guys now coming back to that is join our Diksha KCT WhatsApp channel for all the updates and the PDF which have all been so this about the mock test right free mock test you can join to the WhatsApp channel and you can you can actually avail by clicking the links in the WhatsApp channel which is given in the description box as well you even for to how to how to get this PDF there is a video is also being made the link will be given down so even you can check for that. So we have come to the end of this class. Please kindly like, share and subscribe Diksha Karnataka YouTube channel and today the, your Nirmal sir signs off that is Mansinano Nirmal, Matinalu Nirmal. Bye guys. Have a great day. Stay tuned for the mock test 2 will be out soon. Thank you guys. All the best. Do well.